Number three, Lisa Marie Nagel. Bridalplasty was a controversial reality show that aired on E! in 2010. On the show, 12 women competed to win their dream wedding and extensive plastic surgery. The idea was that the bride would look perfect for a perfect wedding. One of the contestants on the show was 29-year-old Lisa Marie Nagel from San Pedro, California. San Pedro is a neighborhood in Los Angeles. Lisa Marie was eliminated in the seventh episode. Many people thought bridal plasty was in bad taste and it had poor ratings, so it was canceled after a season. Lisa Marie went back to her life after the show. She worked as a nurse and she taught nursing classes. On July 31st, 2011, Lisa Marie married Derek Harriman. Derek worked at the Port of Los Angeles. The couple wanted to have children, but they were having problems conceiving, so they were going to a fertility clinic for treatment. On the night of Saturday, December 17th, 2006, Derek was working. 36-year-old Lisa Marie told him that she was going to a friend's 40th birthday at a beer hall in Torrance, California. She said she probably wouldn't be home late because she had to teach in the morning. Derek arrived home after midnight. He was surprised to find that Lisa Marie wasn't there. She called him after 2 a.m. on Sunday and told him that she was going to stop for food and that she was going to head home. Derek went to sleep. Hours later, he woke up and Lisa Marie still wasn't home. He tried to call her, but she didn't answer. That morning, she didn't show up for work, which was very unlike her. Derek talked to Lisa Marie's brother, Rafael Chavez, and learned that he did not go to the party with Lisa Marie. Derek tried to report his wife missing, but the police told him she needed to be missing for 72 hours. Lisa Marie's brother, Rafael, and her sister, Danielle Nagel, immediately started looking for her. They learned that she had gone to the party with one of her nursing students, 34-year-old Jackie Jerome Rogers. Lisa Marie had told her siblings that Rogers was a friend who was gay. The siblings asked Rogers if he knew what happened to Lisa Marie. He said that they went to the beer hall together, but she went to an after party without him. He went home alone after the bar. He said he didn't know what happened to her. On Monday, a friend of the siblings who worked at the beer hall let the siblings review the security footage. They saw Lisa Marie leave the beer hall with Rogers and get into his SUV. Then they drove off. Danielle and Raphael asked Rogers again about the early morning hours of Sunday. He repeated the story about the after party. Then they confronted him regarding the video. Suddenly, he had a new story. He said that he had dropped her off at a gas station near her house. But he maintained that he didn't know where she was. The siblings thought that the fact he had changed his story was suspicious, so they went to the police. On Tuesday, December 20th, Rogers was brought into the police station for questioning. After several hours of interrogation, he explained what happened. He said that he and Lisa Marie had been having an affair for about six months. That night, they went to the beer hall. Afterward, they went to a fast food restaurant at the end of the night. They got some food and they talked for about 30 minutes in the SUV. Then Lisa Marie broke the news to him that she was ending the affair. She said she was going to recommit herself to her husband and try to have a child with him. Roger said he became angry and picked up a hammer he had in his vehicle. He hit Lisa Marie in the head eight times. He then drove her to his house. He dug a hole in his backyard and put Lisa Marie in the hole. He noticed she was still breathing and he didn't want to bury her alive, so he struck her two more times in the head with a hammer to make sure she was dead. He then covered her body with soil and manure. The police searched the backyard and found the body. Jackie Rogers was charged with first degree murder. Rogers went to trial in September 2018. His lawyer argued that the murder was not premeditated. Rogers had snapped in the heat of the moment and killed Lisa Marie. 
so he should be found guilty of manslaughter and not first degree murder. The trial lasted a little more than a week. The jury deliberated for three days. Jackie Rogers was found guilty of first degree murder. In April 2019, he was sentenced to 26 years in prison. At the time of this video, 40 year old Jackie Rogers is serving a sentence at the Wasco State Prison in Wasco, California. He'll be eligible for parole in August 2033. Number 2 Andre Montgomery Jr. Robbie Montgomery was born on June 16, 1940, in Columbus, Mississippi. After high school, Robbie and two friends started a doo wop group. They were eventually hired to be the backup singer to Start Lassiter. Robbie and Art Lassiter were romantically involved. In 1961, Robbie gave birth to their son, Andre Montgomery. But Lassiter and Robbie didn't stay together. Lassiter was well known for his work with Ike and Tina Turner. In 1960, Robbie and her two friends became the backup singers for the Ike and Tina Turner Review. They became known as the Ike Hats. Even though they were backup singers, they also had their own singles that charted on the Billboard Top 100. They left the review in 1965 and changed their names to the Murats. The trio had moderate success. In the early 70s, Robbie left the group and did backup vocals for some huge acts including Barbara Streisand, Joe Cocker, and Stevie Wonder. But then she suffered a collapsed lung and had to take a break from singing professionally. She moved to St. Louis, Missouri and got a job as a dialysis technician. In 1996, Robbie, who goes by the name Miss Robbie, opened the restaurant Welcome to Sweetie Pies in Delwood, Missouri. Delwood is a small town about 10 miles from downtown St. Louis. The restaurant served soul food based on Miss Robbie's mother's recipes. The restaurant was incredibly popular and Miss Robbie opened a second location in Los Angeles, California in 2005. Then in 2012, the reality show Welcome to Sweetie Pies debuted on the Oprah Winfrey Network, also known as OWN. The show was about Miss Robbie and her family trying to open a third restaurant in St. Louis. A major part of the show was Miss Robbie, who had never been married, looking for love. It also followed the trials and tribulation of her family members, including her son, James Norman, who went by the name Tim. At the start of the series, Nelson was engaged to be married, and he was the father of a young child. The show was a success, and it kept getting renewed for new seasons. One person who appeared in several episodes was Miss Robbie's grandson, Andre Montgomery Jr. He was the son of Miss Robbie and Art Lassiter. Andre was a high schooler living in Lubbock, Texas when he first appeared on the show in 2011. The show featured him struggling with school and the murder of his father, who was killed in a gang-related stabbing in 1995. During the show's run, Andre moved to St. Louis, which is where he graduated from high school. He last appeared on the show in 2013. On March 14, 2016, 21-year-old Andre was at a friend's home in St. Louis. A man came into the house and shot him once in the head. The police and ambulance were called for, but nothing could be done. 21-year-old Andre Montgomery Jr. was pronounced dead at the scene. No arrests were made in the days, weeks, or months after the murder. Welcome to Sweetie Pies was cancelled after nine seasons. Last season premiered in May 2018. On August 18, 2020, the police made a shocking arrest and the murder of Andre Montgomery Jr. They arrested 41-year-old Tim Norman, one of the stars of the show. He was Miss Robbie's son and Andre's uncle. The police had uncovered a convoluted plot that was masterminded by Norman. In 2014, Norman had illegally taken out life insurance policies on Andre worth $450,000 with the help of insurance agent Bailey Wally Rapai Yang Nam. The police also learned that before the murder, Andre was facing financial hardship. Using cell phone records and emails, 
The police learned that Norman enlisted the help of an exotic dancer named Tarika Alice. Norman paid her $10,000 to find someone to shoot Andre and give the hitman Andre's location on the night of the shooting. The shooter was Traval Anthony Hill. Hill cooperated with the police. He said he was paid $5,000 to shoot Andre. In June 2022, Hill pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit murder for hire and one count of murder for hire. He was sentenced to 32 years in prison. In July 2022, Tariq Ellis pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit murder for hire. She was sentenced to three years in prison. That same month, Wally Yangham pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit mail and wire fraud. He was also sentenced to three years in prison. Tim Norman went to trial in September 2022. All three of his co-conspirators testified against him. Norman testified on his own behalf. He claimed he had nothing to do with his nephew's murder and he said he had been a mentor to him. However, he was caught in several lies. The trial lasted just over a week. The jury deliberated for 17 hours over three days. Tim Norman was found guilty of federal for hire murder counts and one charge of conspiracy to commit wire and mail fraud. In March 2023, he was given two life sentences. After her son was convicted of hiring someone to murder her grandson, Miss Robbie closed all the Welcome to Sweetie Pie's restaurants. The last one was closed in September 2022. 43-year-old James Timothy Norman is serving a sentence at the United States Penitentiary Hazleton in Brewston Mills, West Virginia. Number 1. Chrissy Schoen Cod Chrissy Schoen was born in 1976 in Madrid, Spain. Both of her parents were U.S. military members and they were stationed in Madrid at the time of her birth. They were from Louisiana and they moved to Biloxi, Louisiana after being stationed in Madrid. Chrissy learned to cook Cajun food from her father. In December 2000, Chrissy graduated from Louisiana State University with a double major in German and Performing Arts. She then studied acting at the Atlantic Theatre Company in New York, New York. She went on to perform in several stage plays. She also had small roles in films and television shows. Her first role was as a jury forewoman in the legal drama Family Law. But Chrissy's true love was cooking. In 2003, she was a chef on the set of the Julia Roberts-led drama Mona Lisa Smile. She also had a small uncredited role in the film. Over the next several years, Christy continued to get small, uncredited roles in indie films, where her career in food took off. She got jobs as a chef on a set of major films and TV series like The Stepford Wives and HBO's The Comeback. In 2005, she opened a catering business, Classic Catering, which serviced big-budget movies like Ender's Game and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. In 2012, Christy was selected to appear on the 8th season of the cooking competition show Food Network Star. That season, three celebrity chefs, Elton Brown, Bobby Flay, and Giada De Laurentiis, coached teams of five chefs. Christy was on Elton Brown's team. She was eliminated in the first episode. Christy continued to work as a caterer on movie and TV sets. In the mid-2000s, she met Joseph Codd, a stage technician, on the set of the CBS crime drama Without a Trace. At first, they were friends, but their relationship eventually turned romantic. When the couple decided to get married and start a family, they realized they didn't want to do it in Los Angeles. They wanted to live in a small town, so they chose to settle in Leicester, North Carolina, which had a population of less than 20,000 people. In October 2014, Joseph and Christy got married. Around the same time, she became pregnant. In March 2015, 36-year-old Christy planned to open a cafe in town. She was five months pregnant with a girl they planned to name Skylar. Although he lived on the other side of the country, 
38-year-old Joseph continued to work in the film and television industry in Los Angeles. On March 15, 2015, Christy and Joseph's family contacted the police. They were unable to get a hold of the couple for three days. The police went to their home and it appeared someone had broken into it. Several items, including jewelry and laptops, were missing. But there was no sign as to what happened to Christy Schoner Cod and Joseph Cod. It seemed like the couple had disappeared into thin air. The next day, the police received a tip. A person who lived about a mile from the couple noticed that their neighbor, 36-year-old Robert Owens, who went by the name Jason, carrying around large trash bags on his property. The police were familiar with Jason because he was the prime suspect in the disappearance of a young man 15 years earlier. In early 2000, Zeb Quinn worked at a Walmart in Nashville, North Carolina. On January 2, 2000, Zeb finished his shift at Walmart. Jason was one of his co-workers. After the shift, Jason was going to go with Zeb to take a look at a car he wanted to purchase in Lee Sester. They were both driving their own cars. At 9.15 p.m., they were seen on security footage stopping at a gas station. They both bought sodas and returned to their cars. After that, Zeb seemingly vanished into thin air. Jason went to the hospital that night. He had a fractured rib and a head injury. Zeb Quinn's mother reported him missing the next day. Since Jason was the last person seen with Zeb, the police questioned him. He said that after the gas station, Zeb flashed his headlights at him, indicating that he wanted him to pull over, so he pulled over onto the shoulder of the road. Jason said that Zeb told him he received a message on his speaker and he had to make a phone call. He drove off while Jason waited on the side of the road. When Zeb returned, he was frantic. He said he had to cancel the plans and he drove off. Jason said he sped off so quickly that he clipped his rear bumper. As for his head and rib injury, Jason said he was in another car accident that night, but he didn't report the accident to the police. About two weeks after Zeb went missing, his car was found abandoned in the parking lot of a barbecue restaurant in Asheville, North Carolina. The headlights were on. An old hotel key room card and Labrador mix puppy were in the car. On the exterior back window were a pair of lips and two exclamation marks drawn in lipstick. But there were no clues as to what happened to Zeb Quinn. As a result, his case went cold. Fifteen years later, after the police got the tip that Jason was handling large garbage bags, the police looked to see if there was a connection between him and the missing couple. Besides living a mile from the Cods, they considered him a good friend. Jason was a contractor and he had done work on their home. A day after the couple was reported missing, the police searched Jason's home and property. In a wood stove on the property, they found some human remains. It was determined to be the remains of the Cods. Jason was arrested and charged with two counts of felony first degree murder, felony murder of an unborn child, breaking and entering, and larceny. For the first degree murder charges, he was looking at the death penalty if he were to be convicted. Two years later, in April 2017, Jason Owens took a plea deal. He pleaded guilty to three counts of second-degree murder and two counts of dismembering remains. He was sentenced to a minimum of 59 and a half years and a maximum of 74 and a half years of prison. He had a bizarre explanation as to what happened to the Cods. He said that their car became stuck in the ditch and he was helping them get it out. He said he was in the driver's seat, he accidentally ran over them, and then backed over them. He then realized he had killed them. Jason said he didn't want to go to prison, so he made it look like the couple had disappeared. He used a reciprocating saw to dismember the bodies. He then tried disposing of the remains of the wood oven. He moved their car, broke into their house, took several items and pawned them to make it look like their disappearance was the result of a robbery gone wrong. About three months after Jason Owens was sentenced for killing the Cods, he was charged with the murder of Seb Quinn. 
In July 2022, over 22 years after Zeb went missing, Jason once again made a plea deal. And once again, he had a bizarre story about what happened. He said that he didn't kill Zeb. Instead, it was his uncle, Walter Owens, who went by the name Gene, who killed the 18-year-old man. Jason said that his uncle was abusive and controlling. He claimed his uncle tricked him in luring Zeb to Bishkash National Forest. Jason told Zeb that a 28-year-old woman he was interested in, named Misty Taylor, wanted to meet him in the park. When Zeb got to the park, his uncle shot him with a 22 caliber rifle. Then his uncle dismembered and burned the body. Jason admitted that he helped in the cover-up. But why would Jason's uncle Gene want to kill Zeb? Supposedly, Misty Taylor's boyfriend had hired him to kill Zeb. The police were doubtful about this story. They couldn't question Gene Owens because he had died in 2016 at the age of 66 from a heart attack. Nevertheless, the district attorney agreed to let Jason plead guilty to being an accessory after the fact. He was sentenced to 13 to 16 years of prison. That sentence was to run concurrently with his other sentence. Missy Taylor's boyfriend was never charged with Zeb Quinn's murder. The police and the district attorney believe that Jason Owens probably killed Zeb Quinn and he made up the story about his uncle being involved. Zeb's remains have never been found. They also don't believe that Jason accidentally killed the Cods with his car. They also don't know the motive behind the murders. The problem is, is that they don't have evidence to prove what happened or why Jason killed them. Currently, 43-year-old Robert Jason Owens is serving his sentences at the Alexander Correctional Institution in Taylorsville, North Carolina. He'll most likely die in prison. We just want to say a big thank you to Babbel for sponsoring this video. I've always loved punk rock music from all over the world. I never really cared what language they were singing because I just appreciated the energy of the music. For example, I used to listen to a bunch of Dutch bands. Recently, I've been learning to speak Dutch with Babbel. Then something crazy happened the other day. One of those Dutch bands came on my music app and it was one of their Dutch language songs. I realized as I was listening to the song, I understood what they were singing. Ikon nida lova. Ikwak is shok. Now I can't wait to see one of those Dutch bands live, so Ika Mengezega, Oko Benigan, Phrase Like a Zonger. If I can learn to speak and understand Dutch, then anyone can learn a new language with Babbel, which is one of the top language learning apps in the world. It's been scientifically proven that their teaching method is effective. You can start speaking a new language in just three weeks with Babbel. Their bite-sized lessons only take about 10 minutes to complete. They're a little bit challenging, but a lot of fun. Spring is a great time to reinvent yourself and try to live your best life. Why not improve yourself by learning a new language? You also have nothing to lose because Babbel has a 20-day money-back guarantee. Babbel has a great deal for criminally listed viewers. Click on the link below to get 60% off your subscription. Start learning a new language in just three weeks with Babbel. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching.